let me add my sentiments. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. God bless you. You deserve it so very, very much. Would you show your appreciation to our mothers one more time in the house of the Lord? found a few quotes that I'd like to share with you. Moms are the one, excuse me, moms are one of many proofs that God is good. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is mom. M-O-M is just another way of spelling love. And probably my favorite, the best moms get grand, get promoted, excuse me, get my words mixed up. The best moms get promoted to grandma. Praise the Lord. I've heard it said that grandchildren are God's way of rewarding you for not killing your kids. Boy, we got some moms saying amen to that. Grandma's saying amen to that. Let me tell you just a little bit about my story. Uh, my father was killed in a car accident before I was four years old. And uh, so I came from a single parent home. Now, God knows everything, and God knows exactly what's going to happen before it happens. So I believe that God made sure that if this was going to be my plight, that I would have a great mother, and I did. She is with the Lord today. She has been with him for, my goodness, 40 years almost now. And uh, so uh, I think about her often. I miss her. Uh, but uh, I appreciate what my mother did for me. There's a, there's a, there's a scripture found in uh, John chapter 2, verse 12. I, I want to share that with you i want to make a point about that and then i'm going to be going to another place uh, but it, it says this after this he went down to capernaum he talking about jesus and his mother and his brethren and his disciples and they continued there not many days now it, it tells us that they did not stay there long but they stayed there together for a while and um, uh, after that, Jesus goes up to the temple, and, and of course, that's the Father's house, and Jesus is very, very concerned about that. But it tells us that Jesus spent a few days with his disciples, with his brethren, and with his mother. Now, I would love to give you a Mother's Day gift if I could today, but I, I cannot give something to you financially or anything else like that, but here's what I can do to the very best of my ability. I realize that probably a lot of you have got plans today, so I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can and get you to those plans just as quick as I possibly can. And if you're going out somewhere to eat, you can beat the Baptist to the restaurant or, or, or something like that. And uh, uh, that's going to be my Mother's Day gift to you. I'll, I'll, I will do the best I can, okay? When it comes to mothers in the Bible, we certainly have a lot that we could choose from. There is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, that, sa that says, Sarah received strength to conceive seed because she judged him faithful who had promised. You know the story of Sarah, I'm sure. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 11 that when God made a promise to her about children, it says she judged him faithful who had promised her. So moms, I guess one of the questions that I would like to ask you today is how do you judge God in the face of your family, in the presence of your family? Do you judge him faithful? Do you judge him good? Do you judge him loving? Do you judge him kind? You see, children pick up on the attitude of their mothers. 
And when mothers are faithful to God, I've heard the story. In fact, just, just yesterday, we were visiting with a family in Tennessee. We were bringing our grandson back from Lee, uh, loading his stuff up and bringing him back from Lee. And, uh, and we were visiting with a family that we had known years before. And, they, and, and one of their children was one of those uh, uh, rebel children. And they had gone out into the world and they had messed themselves up. But the testimony of the child was this. When he would come in of the evening or at night late, his mother would be in his bedroom on her face before God praying and calling out to God. In other words, this mother had a rebellious son. But this mother also judged God that he was faithful that he could bring this son back home. And sure enough, today he is a Christian. In fact, one of the teachers at Lee University said that if there is an example of a Christian that he would put before people, it would be this boy who used to be reprobate but had a mother that would spend time in prayer judging God faithful that God was going to bring her child back. Well, there's another example in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, that says that women receive their dead back to life again, or their dead was raised back to life again. Well, we understand that this is probably talking about the story of Elisha and the Shunammite woman. And, and, and you know the story, I'm sure, again how that she had been good and kind to the prophet of God and taken care of him and ministered to God's man. But there came a time that her son died and she sent word to the prophet. And she said, I've been good to you. I have served God by ministering to you. My child is dead. I need for you to do something. And the prophet of God came and prayed for the child. And God raised this child back up unto life and gave him back to his mother. What a beautiful testimony of the power of mothers, of the power of mom. Mom, I'm telling you, treat the Treat the preacher right, okay? Treat the prophet of God right. You may need them someday. And if you'll be faithful to them, I believe that God will be faithful to you and God will minister unto your children and take care of your children for you. And then, of course, we can read over in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 20, the story of Hannah, who, who was barren. She had no children. She wanted a child so desperately. And again, this was a praying mother. This was a, or a praying woman. She, she prayed before God so much that Eli thought she was drunk. She wasn't drunk. She was simply connected into God so strong that it didn't matter what was going on around her. But she prayed and she prayed and she prayed and God answered her prayer and gave her a man by the name of Samuel. You and I would understand that Samuel is one of the greatest Old Testament characters, Old Testament heroes of the faith that we could ever find. Why? Because this mother, this woman would pray and seek God and become a mother and then she gave him back to God. This is what mothers or women or whatever have the power to do. Praise God. But the best example of motherhood, in my opinion, is the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus. A couple of things about her that I need to share with you right here. Number one, she did not choose to birth the Messiah. She did not choose this for herself. God chose her. She didn't choose God. God chose her to be the mother of the Messiah. And so I would like to say, why did God do that? Why did God choose this particular woman? There were women that were probably more famous. There were women that were probably more rich. There were women who were probably more influential. And if the Messiah had been born through them, imagine the impact that Jesus could have had. But that's not who God chose. It didn't matter the riches. It didn't matter the popularity. It didn't matter the position or anything else like that. What mattered was that Mary was able to meet the qualifications that would allow her to be the mother of the Messiah. 
Messiah, the, the mother of the Jesus that you, we're here today because of Jesus. The mother of the Jesus that done what he done for us. He saved my soul. He sanctifies us. He fills us with his spirit. He heals us. He ministers unto us. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And, and she was the one who was chosen to birth him so that you and I could experience the blessings that we experience from the Lord. Hallelujah. Why did God choose her? Well, number one, she was pure. You know that she was a virgin. Now, there were probably a lot of virgins in that day and time, but she was one of them. And this was one of the reasons why that God would choose her. Number two, the Bible tells us that she found favor with God and was highly favored among women. In other words, when God who knows everything looked out on the canopy, the scene of all of the women in the world, this one particular young virgin was able to find his favor. There were qualities about her. Uh, we, we talked about the Proverbs qualities earlier. There, there, were pro, there were qualities about her that God said, she is the one. Oh, praise God. And, and, and she was highly favored among all of the other women. So why? God knows Everything He knows the end from the beginning. So besides the things that I have mentioned in regard to Mary, what did God know? What were some of those specific things that God understood about Mary? Well, number one, her life up until the point that Jesus was born qualified her as the one. That would be the mother of Jesus. I've already talked about a couple of these things right here. But let me mention again. She was a virgin. She followed the laws of marriage. We could go into a great deal of depth and detail in regard to the laws of marriage of how that there was the engagement, the espousal, and then there was that waiting period in which the the. the bride would wait on her bridegroom. To, in fact, it was during this engagement, this espousal particular time, a, a period in which she found out that she was with child, of course, supernaturally uh, a, a virgin conceiving by the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? And, and she, was, she was receptive and obedient to the angel's message of God for her. You know, God gives all of us messages if we'll listen. And, 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 and God, God seems to have the ability, well, seems to have the ability, what a ridiculous statement. God has the ability, what I was going to say, women seem to have the ability to hear very closely from the word of God. Uh, uh, Ladies, you'll be proud of me. I gave my wife a Mother's Day card this morning before I left to come to church. And we were sitting there, standing there, reminiscing, uh, reminiscing about, uh, you know, how long it's been that she's been a mother. And I will tell you that it, she doesn't look like it should be that long. But it's coming up that she will be a mother for 50 years. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. And, and so... We were we were reminiscing about that and, and, and thinking about that and and during that time period, what I'm really wanting to say is that during that time period, my wife has has told me things that I said no that's no that can't be so, that 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 cannot be so, and, and my wife has had discernment in regard to our son and I said no that that that, that can't be so, and then as time goes along. Yes, this old boy has to eat his words. Because wife knew what she was talking about. And mom knew what she was talking about. And I guess, 
again, what I'm wanting to say right here is that, that mothers have this, this sixth sense about them in which they, they are able to hear from God that, that dad or men are just not able to hear that. And so Mary was very, very sensitive unto the message of the angel that was sent to her that she was going to be the one of all the women in the world at this particular moment, at this particular time. She was going to be the one that would birth the Messiah of the world. Hallelujah. And so when she was told that, she allowed the Holy Spirit to, to intersect with her life and, and overshadow her. And, and, and she was found with child. And, and, and she allowed to do God. She allowed God to do with her just exactly what he wanted to do with her. And she, again, would be the one who would produce the Christ child. Next of all, her life. And what she did during his life, the life of Jesus I'm talking about, qualified her. So what are the, some of the things that we find out about Mary in regard to the, from the time he was born until the time that he was crucified? What do we find out about her? Well, number one, we find out that she protected him she was willing to go to Egypt with Joseph when there were those out there who wanted to destroy him. You know that the world, the flesh, and the devil want to destroy our children, don't you? Well, Mama, let me tell you something. You're the firewall, okay? I, I know dads are important. Don't misunderstand me. I understand that. But you are the firewall. You are the one that is able to protect them. Your prayer somehow or another touches the heart of God. Your prayers are those prayers that keep them protected when there are those out there that would like to destroy them. And I just want to affirm you mothers here today. I just want to tell you keep up the good work. Keep on praying. Keep on calling upon God. God's hearing you. Hallelujah. And he will answer those prayers and I believe he has the power to protect those children that you birth and those children that you care about so much when he was eight days old she presented Jesus at the temple for circumcision according to the law now what does that got to do with this well I'll think about this for just a moment Jesus at one point in his life would say this I didn't come to destroy the law I came to fulfill the law. And so when we think about it that way, if Jesus would have been raised up in a rebel home, they said, we're not going to get him circumcised when he's eight days old. We're not going to go to the temple. We're not going to worship. We're not going to give to God. We're not going to do any of these things. How could Jesus have then said later on, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. You see, Jesus was taught the importance of the law that was certainly leading toward him and his fulfillment of the law because he was taught it at home. He was taught it by his mother. He was taught it by his father. He understood all of that. And so when the time came, hallelujah, he was taken care of. And the Bible tells us in regard to Jesus that he grew in stature with God and with men. How was he able to do that? How did he grow so strong in his character? How did he grow so strong in his, uh, in his relationship to God and men? Because he learned it at home. He learned it there because Mary took kept, made sure that he was taken care of and Joseph took care to make sure that he was taken care of. When he was 12 years old and he stayed behind and they didn't know it, mom and dad left the caravan of people that were going home and they went back to Jerusalem and they searched and they searched for Jesus. And of course, you know the story. They found him in the temple as he was teaching there. But they cared about him. They wanted to protect him. 
God had given them this wonderful child. God had given them this wonderful blessing in their life. And they were not going to be uh, careless about it. They were not going to allow it to be lost. But they were going to nurture it and take care of it. And he was brought up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. She supported Jesus in his ministry when he was 30 years old. Moms, how many times have you went to a child's ball game and you really didn't want to go? You're not interested in softball. You're not interested in baseball. You're not interested in soccer. But that child was interested in it. And you said, that's my child. He or she is the best player on the team. Whether they prove it out on the field or not. And I'm going to support them. And I'm going to be right there. And I'm going to be cheering for them. And that umpire better not strike them out. One preacher friend of mine said, his mother literally, I'm, I'm not giving in. I don't take this as gospel. Don't take this as something to do. I'm just telling you what can happen. He said his mother literally took a ball bat and went after the umpire when he struck him out, I think. You're, that's, that's, not, that's not godly. Okay? But you, you, I think you understand what I'm saying to you right there. She supported Jesus in his ministry. She was often there. And she often came to him in regard to his ministry now let me try to hold to my word and let me give you my, my basic last point right here. All right? And it is what she did at and after his death that qualified her. What she did before his birth qualified her. What she did during his life qualified her. And what she did after his death qualified her and God saw all of this and said she's the one I am choosing her to birth the Messiah my son the Bible clearly tells us that she was at the cross of Jesus Christ I'm sure that if any of us would have been there and seen what was going on we would have ached in pain when they were taking those nails and putting them into his hands and into his feet and all of the things that they were doing for him. But I'm going to tell you something. If anybody felt it more than Mary, well, I just don't think so. She felt the pain of the nails just almost as much as Jesus did because it was like it was her this was her son that was experiencing this. If anybody felt the humiliation of the event like Jesus, it was her. She had always loved him. She had always cared for him and, and took care of him. But on that day, Mary was mama. Mary was his mother. And Jesus makes seven last statements on the cross. And one of those he, direct, he, he addresses directly to Mary. And he says, woman, behold thy son. In other words, he acknowledged that this woman was his mother and he was her son. And then in the very next statement, he looks at John, the beloved disciple. And he placed all of the care of his mother in his hands. And he told John, he said, behold your mother. She has been a mother to me. I'm her son. I want to make sure that she is taken care of. She's very, very specifically, he prayed for the world. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But in regard to his mother, he said, John, I want you to make sure that you take care of my mother. She's your mother now. You take care of her just like she was 
yours. That's how important. That's how important she was. But not only was she a loving and a caring mother, but at some point she became a loyal, believing, obedient follower of Jesus Christ. What, what good would it have done for Mary to have birthed Jesus and did all that she'd done? I, I, just, I just hit some of the highlights right here. What good would it have done if she'd have went through all of that and died without believing in him, without obeying him, with, with, without following him? Moms, you do a great job. Oh, you do wonderful. You do wonderful. And we appreciate you so very, very much. But after you've done all of that, can you honestly, truly say, I believe in Jesus. I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm going to be obedient to Jesus. Mary had to do this just like anybody. Just because she was his mother didn't mean that she got a, a, a free pass. She didn't get exempt. You know, she, she had to reach that point. How do we know that? Well, well, certainly we know it but by a lot of means, but just one. The Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 1, verse 14, I won't read it, but on the day of Pentecost, she was in the upper room with the 120, just like them. Oh, wow. She, she, she wanted... The promise of the Father. She wanted to affirm her faith in Jesus Christ. And so she was there. And on the day of Pentecost, when the rushing mighty wind came, hallelujah, and filled all the house where they were sitting, she was filled with the Holy Spirit just like everybody else. Stand together with me, please. No, stop, stop. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. First, okay, all the moms stand, okay. If you're a mom here today, please stand. All right? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Isn't this beautiful? Praise the Lord. Well, well, one more time, would you show your appreciation to mom? So I'm going to pray for moms today, and then we're going to be dismissed. But would you please stand with your mom if she's here or your what grandma if she's here? Stand, 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 stand up with them. Stand up with them. Praise the Lord. I don't know, and I promise this is it. I, 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 I've been here a couple times before. I appreciate your pastor allowing me to come. and, and uh, uh, I, So I know some of you by face. I've seen you now a time or two. But maybe you're here today and you come on Mother's Day and you're a son or you're a daughter or you're a friend or you're somebody that knows this person, and you just came to be with him on Mother's Day. And while you're standing, you know, I tell you, if that mom or that grandma could have anything, if you don't know the Lord, the thing that would make their day would be for you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And after we get through praying this prayer, if you do that, and would do that for mom, for grandma. If you just looked at them and say, hey, while I stand in and that preacher was preaching or, or praying, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I'm going to do my best to serve him. You can do that right now as I pray. Father, I come unto you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray your blessing upon every mother. I pray your blessings upon every grandmother that is in this house today and that may be listening to us through other means and methods. And Lord, if there's one or more in this house that does not know you, if there's a son or a daughter that does not know you, if there's a grandchild that does not know you, Lord, I pray that they would ask you into their life. And when this prayer is over, that they would affirm to mom, to grandma, that they asked you, Lord Jesus, to come in and be their Savior. And they're going to do their best, Lord, to serve you. They're going to do their best to serve you. Now, Lord, for every mama in this house that you have granted the gift and the ministry of motherhood to, 
I pray your richest blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. And let this be a special day and all the rest just like it, Lord. And again, we'll praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you.